In this video, I'll be giving you the best guide for the Love and War Easter Egg on the Black Ops 3 Zombies map, Gorod Krovi. For Gobblegum, I would recommend using both Undead Man Walking and Idle Eyes. Undead Man Walking slows down the speed of all enemy types to the pace of around one zombie for 4 minutes, and Idle Eyes makes the zombies ignore players for 30 seconds at a time and has 3 separate activations. For Perka Colas, I would suggest getting Juggernog, which is located on the 2nd floor of the department store, Stamina Up, which can be found at the top of the infirmary, Double Tap, which is on the 2nd floor of the tank factory, and Speed Cola, which is on the ledge of the supply depot. Before we begin, there's a few things that aren't necessary for the easter egg but really help during the main quest. Get the Raygun Mark III and Monkeys from the mystery box as well as completing the Mangler Helmet quest. The Mangler Helmet will increase damage dealt to Russian Manglers as well as reducing their damage output. The Mangler Helmet can be acquired by shooting 5 helmets and 5 arm cannons off of different Manglers throughout the match. Once you complete both, an audio cue will sound and you can pick up the helmet from the mannequin on the second floor of the department store. And as always, there's a few different side quests you'll need to complete for various steps of the easter egg that are required, the first of which is building the Guard of Vafnir Shield. There's only one workbench on the map where the shield can be crafted and it's at the bottom of the map in the operations bunker. The first part of the shield is the dragon head and can be found in the infirmary either on the rubble near stamina up, on the middle floor on the bunk beds, or at the top of the staircase that leads you back to the operations bunker. The second part is the dragon heart and can be found right next to Juggernog on the car between the department store and operations bunker or on the shelf inside of the operations bunker. The last part for the shield can be found next to the wonder fizz on the lower level of the armory, on the wall near the pathway from the armory to the supply depot, or on the crate at the top of the armory. Once you have all three parts taken the operation bunker and you can craft the guard of Fafnir shield. Next side quest we'll be covering is how to gain access to the Pack-a-Punch bunker. First turn on the power that's next to Sophia at Dragon Command. Once the power is on, zombies will begin to drop code cylinders that need to be placed at three different computers around the map. The first cylinder that will drop is the code for Dragon Command, the second cylinder is the Supply Depot code, and the last code cylinder to drop is the Tank Factory code. Once you place a cylinder into its computer, a Groth module will drop from the sky and can be easily located by the green light that shoots into the air after it drops. Run to the module and defend it from an incoming zombie attack and once it's charged, it will open revealing a piece for the Dragon Network Circuit. Once you've gotten all three, head to the Operations Bunker and interact with the circuit board. The Dragons at Dragon Command, Supply Depot, and Tank Factory are all now active. Interact with the computer at them to call the Dragon in and you can ride it to the Pack-a-Punch Bunker. Now that you've successfully accessed the Pack-a-Punch Bunker, you can acquire the Dragon Strikes. In the top left room of the bunker, there's a crystal that every player in the game has to interact with. This will start a four-part lockdown sequence in the bunker, so make sure you're stocked up for this because it'll spawn a bunch of zombies, manglers, and Valkyrie drones. Survive the lockdown and after the end, you'll be able to interact with the crystal again to pick up the dragon strikes. Now we're on to acquiring the gauntlet of Siegfried. On your way out of the hatchery, there will be an egg sitting above the sewage fast travel. Shoot the egg with an explosive or throw a grenade at it to get it to roll off of the ledge. Pick up the egg and take the sewage fast travel back to the spawn area. You now have to place the egg in a nest which can be found anywhere that the dragon breathes fire. Once it's placed in a nest, wait for a dragon to breathe fire on the egg. It will need a full round to cool down after its fire bath. After cooling, pick up the egg and you have to now complete three separate challenges in order with the egg in your inventory. The first is killing napalm zombies that have been lit on fire by the dragon, the second is getting penetrating multi-kills, and the last challenge is getting melee kills. You can track your progress on the challenges by looking at the yellow bar bordering the egg on your inventory screen. Once all three challenges are complete, return to the hatchery and place the egg into the incubator. This will start a lockdown and after 60 seconds the lockdown will end and the egg will begin a cooldown period. Progress another full round and the egg will be available for pickup. Take the egg to your challenge grave and spawn and you'll be able to pick up the gauntlet of Siegfried. Now that we have the setup complete, we're on to the first step of the main easter egg which is the valve step. Inside of the hatchery to the right of the incubator, you'll notice a giant generator with a tarp over it. You need to lure a Valkyrie drone in front of it and have it use its shock attack to power up the generator. You'll know it's powered up when air blows the tarp at the front of the generator. This is most easily done during the incubation lockdown for the Gauntlet of Siegfried when the Valkyries spawn in. Once the generator is active, you'll have to go back to the main area of the map and find a valve with a green light on it and one with a pink code cylinder lodged in it. There are six different locations that the valves can be found in. The first is on the top floor of the department store, the second is at the top floor of the armory, the third can be found below the stairs in the supply depot. The fourth is at the top of the stairs of Dragon Command, the fifth is near the bunk beds in the infirmary, and the final location is on the bottom floor of the tank factory. Once you've made note of which one has the green light and which one has the code cylinder in it, you'll have to turn the valves to a specific number to filter the air through the valve housing the code cylinder. There's so many combinations for this step, but there's a website created by Mr. Waffle Waffles that allows you to input where the green light and the code cylinder are in your game. If you input them into the website, it will tell you what numbers each of the valves in your game need to be turned to in order to free the code cylinder. The website is called Cronorium.com, but an exact link will be in the description below. Just know that this step is on a timer, so make sure that the website is up and ready to go before you start this step. If the airflow stops in your game, simply return to the generator at the hatchery and interact with it to turn the air back on. Once you have the valves turned to the correct numbers, you can pick up the code cylinder from the valve that's housing it and insert it into Sophia back at Dragon Command. 
Using a bullet weapon, shoot the letters on the cylinder and spell out Kronos. Then interact with Sophia to move on to the next step. After a bit of dialogue from Sophia, you'll be prompted to start the Ascension Protocol. You'll have to find and interact with six different trophies that are hidden throughout the map. The first is the globe on the statues outside of Dragon Command that can be shot down with a bullet weapon. The second is the Valkyrie drone that can be collected by shooting the windowsill next to double tap with your dragon shield. The third is the nuke which can be found by dropping a dragon strike on the puddle outside of the supply depot. The fourth is the mangler which can be collected by activating the robot eye beam trap inside of the supply depot and waiting for it to finish burning through the floor. The fifth is the group 935 logo which requires you to take the sewage fast travel from the hatchery back to spawn. About halfway through there will be a red light at the top of the sewer and as you pass it shoot it to turn it green. Return back to the pack a punch bunker and collect the trophy from the toilet on the first floor. The last is the Groff module which can be found by punching the save from the operations bunker with the gauntlet of Siegfried. Once you have all six trophies you can interact with the computer on the opposite side of Sophia to place the trophies in their pedestals. Each of the trophies now correlate with specific challenges and interacting with the computer again will start a flashing light that will land on a random trophy. Every one of the challenges will be on a timer, so move to complete them as quickly as possible. The first challenge we'll cover is the Groff Module Trophy. This challenge spawns another Groff Module into the game, except this time it will spawn outside of the map. For around 90 seconds, you'll have to defend the Groff Module that's outside of the map from zombies that attack it. This is most easily done if you have a Raygun Mark III, because you'll be able to slow the zombies down and kill the ones that are on the other side of the module that you might not be able to see. After the module opens up, you have to send your dragon from the Gauntlet of Siegfried out to retrieve the cargo. Pick it up and give it to Sophia. The second challenge we'll cover is the Russian Mangler Trophy. A green Eyed Russian Mangler will spawn inside of the tank factory. You have to escort him into the teleporter in Dragon Command for Sophia to analyze. If you're careful enough, you can shoot the arm cannon off of his left arm to make him chase after you faster. Once he's at the teleporter, he'll be sucked in for analysis and you can move on to the next challenge. The next challenge we'll be covering is the Gersh Anomaly Challenge. You'll have to walk around the map and listen out for a glowing audio cue accompanied by a giant yellow orb. If you get too close, the orb will fly away and you have to chase it down. When the orb is in sight, shoot it with the pack a punch ray gun Mark III to stop it in its tracks. It will begin to fly away after speaking to you, but be quick to shoot it again and stop it again. To make this go as quickly as possible, continue to shoot it even if it's not moving so it doesn't scurry off while you're not paying attention. After the third audio cue, it will fly to the teleporter in Dragon Command for analysis and you can start another challenge. Another challenge it could land on is the Valkyrie drone. This is where I would pop the Undead Man walking gobblegum if you have any to spare. This is another escort step similar to the Mangler one, except you'll be escorting a Valkyrie drone that has 1 HP. You'll find the friendly Valkyrie if you go back to spawn and stand next to the far left barrier. You have to stand super close to the drone, so if you have Widow's Wine, I suggest throwing them out before starting the escort step. Walk the drone all the way back to Dragon Command, and when it reaches the teleporter, it'll be sucked up for analysis. Probably the most stressful of all the challenges is the nuke trophy or bomb step. If it lands on the bomb trophy, the computer screen will flash at every possible location on the map, and then it'll flash again at a much slower pace. I would suggest having a phone or recording software if you have it, ready for the step in case you don't remember the order that the bombs flash in. The order is different in every single game, but the bombs are located in the department store on the lowest floor behind the stairs, in the infirmary near the stairs leading to the operations bunker, in the armory next to the Wonder Fizz location, in the supply depot in the right corner of the room, in the tank station in the room with the gobble gum machine, and lastly in Dragon Command outside of the box location. This step is on a timer so move as quickly as possible to defuse the bombs. If you hit the bombs in the wrong order, it will instantly down you and if you're in a co-op match, anyone near any of the other bomb locations will be instantly downed as well. Once you've successfully defused all the bombs, you can head back to Dragon Command and start another challenge. Although the previous five challenges will always randomize in your game, the last challenge we'll cover is always going to be the last challenge in your game and that's the group 935 trophy. This is another holdout at the Pack-a-Punch Bunker, similar to the Dragon Strike holdout, except you'll be fighting only Russian Manglers. Before you head back to the bunker, make sure to pick up the key card that's in the drawer of the computer that will open up as soon as the light lands on the 935 trophy. Once you have the key card and make it to the bunker, on the main floor across from the toilet, you'll notice a computer screen that you can input the key card into to start the lockdown. If you're in co-op, everyone will have to interact with the computer to start the lockdown. As mentioned, only manglers will spawn throughout the duration of the holdout, and a good tip to complete the step easily is to kill all of the manglers from the first wave of the lockdown except for the last one that spawns in, and then run it around for the duration of the lockdown. After the download is complete, pick up the keycard from the computer, return to Dragon Command, and give Sophia the keycard. In exchange for the keycard, Sophia will give you the power core to Ultimus Nikolai. Once you've picked up the keycard, go back to the spawn area and outside of the map on the right side of the fountain, launch your dragon towards the broken buildings. The dragon will give the power core to Nikolai and will ask you to join him in fighting the dragon. You're about to be at the point of no return for the boss fight, so you have some time to get yourself prepared. I would suggest getting a fresh dragon shield, stocking back up on ammo if you're low, and pack-a-punching either the L4 Siege or the XM-53 rocket launchers while pulling the
the idolized gobble gum to take with you to the boss fight. When you're ready to enter the boss fight, make your way back to Dragon Command. Sophia will have some more dialogue before flying off into the sky. After she takes off, you'll be able to stand on the metal grate where she was housed. This is what leads you to the boss fight arena, so every player must stand on the grate in order for it to open up. Once all players are on the grate, it'll drop you into a sewage fast travel that takes you to the boss arena. Once there, press the button in the middle gazebo to shoot a robot laser at the rubble to free Nikolai. In the first stage of the boss fight, you'll fight alongside Ultimus Nikolai to try to take down the giant dragon. The dragon will perch itself on buildings and breathe fire down on the area. When this happens, take out your shield to protect yourself from the fire. After the fire goes away, Nikolai will shoot a harpoon into the dragon's side, exposing it. Shoot the weak spot with either your Raygun Mark III's or the rocket launcher that you have, and the dragon will take damage, moving on to the next building. Again, fire will rain, and you'll have to take out your shield and run around so you don't burn. After that fire goes away, Nikolai will shoot another harpoon into the other side of the dragon. Shoot his weak spot once more with the Raygun Mark III or rocket launcher bullets. The dragon will move again and spit more fire. After the fire disappears, Nikolai will shoot a final harpoon into the dragon's neck. Quickly shoot the dragon with your heavy ammo to finish him off. If you fail to finish the dragon off at this point, he'll take flight and shoot fireballs at you. Just run around and move as sporadically as possible. If you manage to take the dragon down, it'll explode and you can move on to the Nikolai portion of the boss fight. Nikolai is a little bit more challenging to take down than the dragon because you also have to fight zombies, manglers, valkyrie drone, and raps while doing so. This is why I suggest bringing Idolize into the boss fight because you'll be able to stop all of the enemies including Nikolai and just focus on shooting his mech suit. If you don't have Idolize, it's fine, it'll just be a bit harder to take him down. Shoot both of the yellow glowing vents on the lower section of his mech suit, then the top left and the top right sides of his mech suit to destroy it. Upon defeating Nikolai, the cutscene will play, you'll be rewarded with the love and war achievement, the gate worm icon, as well as a perkaholic. And if you manage to beat this easter egg in under 90 minutes, your perkaholic will become permanent. If you enjoyed this easter egg guide and found it useful, be sure to leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Also in the description there's a playlist with more easy easter egg guides if you need any help for any of the other easter eggs.